All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Shabbat, Shalom, to my Hebrew brothers and sisters. Another beautiful day, of course, another beautiful Shabbat and day that the Lord has made and allowed us to come together to break the bread of life. We are just grateful that the Most High has awakened us in these last days to be able to understand and have wisdom of what is going on in this world. Um, the Bible says that darkness cannot comprehend light because light is shining from the Most High Himself and darkness cannot comprehend that because darkness does not have any purpose in light. Now, the Lord can be in the darkness to shine His light of His Word, of His continents, to change some things, but darkness still cannot comprehend light. And so that's why I'm so glad that we walk in the light of the Most High. We walk in that light. We're not in darkness as other men are in darkness. We're walking in the light of the Most High Yahweh and His Son Yahweh Shai because He has given us His Holy Spirit. And so when we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is wisdom. So we don't walk in darkness. We are definitely walking in the light of, of the Lord and we want to continue to be obedient to Him so that we can reap the benefits and the favor of the Most High and we can live in His abundance of peace, of joy, of love and the power that He's given us. The scripture said that, you know, He this, the, this Holy Spirit does not give us the spirit of fear. Right? He does not give us the spirit of, of fear but of love and of power and a sound mind. That means we're going to be okay. We're going to have this power within us that we're not going to be afraid of anything. We're not going to feel like the world is 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 overwhelming us and taking us out or the world is just coming down on us. No, we're going to be in peace with the Most High because we know that the Bible says, He that keep his mind on thee, he will keep him in perfect peace. Now, the Scriptures is not a lie. Scriptures is not a lie. If you have your mind on the Most High, He's going to keep you in perfect peace. There's no other way your mind is going to have peace other than if you keep your mind on the Most High. He said, if you keep your mind on me, that I will keep thee in perfect peace. Now, what other way that's going to go? You either in the world and, you know, entertaining things of the world and entertaining people that is no good for you. Or either your spirit is in the word. You're, you're, you're constantly being edified by the word. You're in fellowship with the saints. Then that means that you have peace. You're not, you know, uh, discombobulated with the cares of the world that's bringing you misery and frustrating your life. Now, no doubt, the Bible said, cast your cares on him, for he cares for us, and he will sustain us. What that means, of course, you're going to go through some situations that's going to test and try you, but that doesn't mean that you're going to just throw in a towel and feel like giving up because your world is crumbling, crashing down. No, the Bible said he give us peace, because in the midst of your frustration, in the midst of your frustration, in the midst of your... In contentment, the, in the midst of your worrying and all of this stuff that you're putting on yourself, because the scripture already told us how our minds are going to have perfect peace. And you enter into that realm of prayer. That's how you have it and his word in the midst of you not accepting that. And you are surrounding yourself with every negative thought and situation and people and engaging yourself in what's wrong. You're going to make a, a bad mistake. You're going to make a decision that's going to cost you. It could cost your salvation. It can cost you in many areas of your life because you can't hear from the Lord. You can't hear from the Lord when you all twisted up in your mind. And so the Lord wants us to understand that. And so that's why, you know, coming into this truth and understanding 
you know, what the Shabbat is all about and how Israel, the Bible says that they did not enter into his rest. So they didn't enter into the promise. That's a word for us that the Lord want us to understand that unless we enter into his rest and cast our cares upon him, stop trying to do everything on the Lord's holy day and stop trying to handle life on your own and trying to get out of situations on your own. We got to hear from the Lord. Like the scripture says, judge nothing before time. If you don't know what to do, then judge nothing before time. Just wait on the Lord. He'll prove it to you. The Most High will show you what you should do, where you should go, what you should say. As the scripture says, he will give you what to say in the same hour. So you got to, we have to learn to be all the way in the Most High. There's nothing else out there. And uh, whatever the Lord want to change in our lives, uh, that's what he's going to change. That's what he's going to do. And so we just embrace his spirit and just thank him today. Hallelujah. Today, the Lord has given a word, of course. He's always, he always has a word for us. And we're going to be talking about running this race. The scripture talks about running this race with patience. The race that is set before us. We're in a race. If anybody don't think that we're in a race, you're sadly mistaken. You're not living in this truth. We are in a race for our lives in this world. And that we, we have to stay focused in the race. We're going to look at the scripture, of course, where the Bible tells us how we should run this race. You don't just run this race and... Why you running, you just eating or you're you're entertaining and laughing and you're just having fun and no, you have to focus when you're in a race. Not only do you have to focus, you have to stay in your own lane. That's pretty particular what the race is all about as well. Staying in your lane. Striving lawfully. The Bible says if any man is in a race, they can't win the race. If they competing Unless they strive lawfully, which means you got to do it by the rules. You got to do it by the laws and the statutes and commandments. If you're not running the race and obeying the most high, you're going to be disqualified. People that start off before they, you know, start the race, the race is started. You're disqualified because you're, you're, you're moving ahead of the Lord. And we, we using this in a spiritual analogy from a natural perspective, if you're in a race in the natural perspective and you down and you ready to take off and you take off before it's time to take off, you're disqualified. You can't be running ahead of the Lord. You can't be making decisions ahead of the Lord. We have to wait, run this race with patience. Yeah. You know, we, that's what faith is all about. The Lord has given us faith to believe and trust him. We don't want to be disqualified from the race, but we're in a race. Let's look at some scripture that tells us about the race that we're in. Because this is serious. This is serious, the race that we're in. So we want to look at, um, I want to look at a scripture here. I was looking at it earlier because... The Most High has been dealing with me about patience, trusting in Him, not worrying, not going before Him. But really trusting the Lord at the pace that He wants me to run this race. So let me get this scripture. Give me a second here. All praises to the Most High. Turn on these devices. and I still have not gotten my apocrypha, of course, um, from Amazon. But nevertheless, we got the word in our hearts. And the Most High is with us. So we're going to look at a scripture here from, sec I'm sorry, Salakia. First Timothy. Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. 
All praises. My husband brought me his Apocrypha. I got mine. All praises. So I have my Apocrypha. My husband's Apocrypha. It's our Apocrypha. Our Apocrypha. The but Lord's you know, Apocrypha. I just, I just got to have mine tangibly, one that I ordered and they did not deliver it. So, but yeah, my husband and I, we sharing our Apocrypha. So, but First Timothy chapter 6, and we want to look at verse 12. The scripture says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. This is a beautiful scripture because the Lord is letting us know that. We're in a fight. Not only are we in a race, but we're in a fight. We're going to see the other scriptures in a minute about the race, running the race. But right now we want to focus on what the scripture is saying here about the fight. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. It's a good fight of faith because it's all in your mind. It's all in your spirit, the spirit of your mind. Fight the good fight of faith. See, we're in a fight. But the good thing about it, we're fighting a good fight of faith. I mean, we have all that we need because we have every scripture that we need to fight against the thoughts, to fight against the evil. We have prayer. We have the Holy Spirit. So we got a good, we got a, all of the resources that we need to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life because that is the prize. That is the goal. Eternal life. You have a lot of people stuck up in this world and stuck on this world with the material of things, um, prestige and power and pride and just a lot of things. They've letting it gone to the head. It's gone to the head. They don't see nothing inside. You have people, they don't care anything about you talking about scriptures. They don't care anything of you talking about the Lord. The Bible said, God is not in the thoughts of the wicked at all. So those are the dangers that is that are out here in this world, the wicked, you know. They're not thinking about eternal life. You see, we that are wise and have this great salvation, Israel, because he only came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel from our enemies. See, we have enemies, and that's why we see so many things going on in the news, because we have enemies. The Lord is telling us, look, you have another place that I'm taking you to. You have another eternal hope. That's what the eternal hope is all about. That's what the patience of the saints is, is all about. It's about enduring, enduring and pressing through. Now, no doubt there's blessings. It's so I care that the Most High is going to release upon our lives because he promised some things, right? Like Job said, I believe I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because there's some things that the Most High promised. You think about Job, if the Lord had just took him out the world just like he was on his back stricken, you know? If the Lord had just taken him out like that, you know, it just would have been a sad story, right? You didn't never see, he didn't never see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Old Job died in his misery. No, the Lord had a promise for Job, you know? So, but Job's heart was just so sold out on the Lord and he fixed it in his mind to love the Lord. Don't curse the Lord. Don't blast him the Lord just because he was in misery and looked like he's about to die and everything taken away from him. No. He said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. David said it too. I know that my Redeemer liveth and he should stand at the last. That, that means the Most High going to show up one day. And you look at the man that was, was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years waiting to get into the pool so he could be healed. He was lame. He had nobody to put him in the pool. 38 years, people looking at him like, you just might as well give up. Why are you still here? I can't believe that you're waiting this long. You must be cursed. All kind of things, right? But see, people have this strong faith in the Most High. Like Abraham, the Bible said, the scripture says that Abraham was, was strong in faith. 
that he did not waver nor staggered at the promise of God, but he knew that he that promised was faithful to perform what he had promised. So because why? The patriarchs and people that love the Lord have their mind set on the eternal promise of eternal life. You, you, you're not caught up down here. So you're the ones that the most high will will give you your due because your heart is in the right place. Your spirit is in the right place. You know, like he told Moses to tell the children of Israel, when I bless you, open your hands wide. Don't hold on to it. Bless your people. Why? Because we have a better place. A better place that we're going not made by the hands of man. And so many times, you know, like the Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. You know, people, they're afraid to leave this world. They want to get it all. They want to experience it all. They don't want to leave this world. You got people in their 90s on their deathbed saying, I'm not ready to go. Why? See, we're going to be here as long as the Lord tells us to, right? And he's going to provide. He's going to bless. He's going to do everything that he said he's going to do. So a lot of time when I talk about eternal life, I have to balance it out with the scriptures when it comes to the promises of the Lord, right? Now, like, again, let's go back to Job. The Lord could have left Job in that state and just took him home because he was an upright man and perfect, the most perfect man in the East, he was the most blessed, perfect man in the East. The Lord already knew that, but see, he was going through his tests where the Lord was proving something in the eyes of his naysayers, in the eyes of his friends, in the eyes of those that knew Job. And in, in the eyes, there's probably people that he didn't know to, so that the Lord can be magnified in Job's life that here's an upright man that didn't curse me. He didn't curse other people because he was going through a dire straight situation. You know, no, he held fast to the faith that he always knew who the Lord really was, who he knew the Lord was in his personal life. He knew the Lord. He knew the most high Yahweh. He knew he knew like Abraham and Enoch. These people knew the Lord by the spirit. They wasn't just making up or trying to know the Lord. These people knew the Lord. They knew that they had to be still. They knew that. They knew in their spirit. They had a knowing of God in their spirit. They had an experience with the Most High from their past. They didn't just come into the knowledge of the Lord. How can you wait on the Lord like that and you don't know him? You only can wait on the Lord when you know him. And that's what our ancestors did. And they knew that they couldn't get their lives caught up in the material possession. They had to wait on the Lord to come and bless them and make a way. That's why Israel was so blessed because they seen the manifestation of the goodness of the Lord where he promised them. But the Lord wanted our nation to be to lay hold on eternal life. Because that's what's matter more than anything down here right now. Eternal life. Eternal life. See. That's I uh, love the teacher's message about the eternal perspective. The whole race, the whole fight is about our eternal perspective. You want to that means more than anything because we got to stand before the Lord. I mean, who want the Lord to tell them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You thought you did. You thought you knew the Lord. How would that be for someone that thought they really knew the Lord? But then the Lord was like, your heart was wicked. You was into worldly possessions. How can a person get to the, stand before the Lord and the Lord say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And the person said, why? I prophesied in your name. The Lord is going to say, you prophesied lies. You didn't show love. You didn't show love to your neighbors. You didn't bring somebody a cup of water. You didn't. You know, when you don't give a person a cup of water, if you have it, of course, if you, you know, if they ask you for water, they're perishing or whatever, you, you, you must give people a cup of water. You must feed the hungry. You must go and visit people in prison. 
These are things the Lord is saying. If you don't do these things to the most least little one, you have not done it to me. And when you have done it for the least little ones, you have done it to me. For me and to me. That is what Christ Yahweh is saying here. So it's that we, we must lay hold on eternal life. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. See, let, let me say this. The Most High is serious about our salvation. And we should be too. Well, well, let's go back to scriptures here. First Timothy chapter six, verse 12. Let's get through this. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. He said, lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called. We are called to eternal life. He's chosen us before the foundation of the world. You are awakening in this truth. Even if you're, even if you're still inside the church, there are many people that have not left the church yet, but they just are striving all of they. You know, with all of their might, rather, to live for the Lord. What are the Lord going to do about them? But they don't know they're Israel. Maybe they heard it and they don't really understand it. That's, that's the most high's business. But I know one thing, we still Israel. And he want us to lay hold to eternal life. He came to reveal who our enemies are because without you knowing your enemies, you're going to get caught up. You're going to get caught up with the enemy because you don't know who they are. So we go to another scripture here, a little further down. It says, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse, let's start at verse 1. We're going to go to verse 4. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, like the ancestors. We, we are surrounded by ancestors that have gone on, that have run this race. That made it into the, ki the kingdom. We also can pass about with so great a cloud of witnesses. They all around us in the spirit. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. See, the Lord is telling us, like, lay everything down that's going to hinder you from, from running this race with patience. He said, let us run this race with patience, the race that is set before us. Looking unto Yahawashai, the author and finisher of our faith. We got to look to him. We got to look to Yahawashai Christ. We got to look. Somebody said, who's Yahawashai? We're talking about who we always known as Jesus, but his real name is Yahawashai. We got to do it. Look unto him. Keep your eyes fixed and gaze. The scripture talks about that. Your eyes got to be gazed in the spirit. Every morning, every day, all day you wake up. Wherever you go, what you doing? You got to make sure that you are in the spirit with your Yahweh He left the comforter for us to be able to understand how to live this life, how to walk circumspectly, how to keep our eyes on him. Why? Who? Looking unto you, how shall the author and finish of our faith? Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross? Christ endured the cross. Christ endured the cross while he was walking this earth. The cross that was put on him from persecutors, his enemies, naysayers, false accusers. He endured it all. You got some wicked spirit out here. Let me tell you something. You better, when you on that social media, looking around and browsing, and you see all the millions and millions and millions and millions of comments, people are ruthless. You, they're ruthless. And you can imagine what Christ went through. We're going to look at that scripture, you know, Consider him. We got to consider Christ who endures such such contradiction of men. Contradiction. Such contradiction of men. Contradiction? Everything they were saying about him was a lie. The contradiction of sinners. The contradiction of haters and enemies. The, they contradict to the contrary who he really was. To the contrary. To the contrary, who he really was. That's why we got to still be in his word. We got to still teach it. We got to live it. Go down. 
with the word so you can go up with the most high. That's why he tells us to be humble. Be humble in his life. Stay humble with the most high. Keep your heart humble. But be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Don't cause trouble with people. But stay strengthened in the spirit of your mind. So you can guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of it flow the issue of life. Don't let nobody get you caught up out here in this world. You running a race. You got to stay in your lane. You got to focus. You got to keep your eyes. On the prize. You're running. You're running. You're running. We're running this race. We're fighting a good fight of faith. This is a race every day we get up. And what's coming? What's coming? Look what's happening in the third world countries. Look what's happening over there. What is going on? The Most High is tearing it up, blowing it up. He's doing things. He's doing things. See, I know those that say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 2 and 9 and 3 and 9. We got to understand that the Most High is waking up our people. He's getting rid of the lies and the things that has been done to us as a nation. But see, we are amongst our enemies, so we have to be careful. Again, let's go back to the scripture here. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. He despised the shame. He didn't like it going up Golgotha Hill. Despised the shame of his garment being torn apart. Putting thorns of thistles like a crown on his head. He looked like us. Not what you see in the passion of Christ. No, that's that. he didn't look like that. He looked it like us. Oh, oh he came to save Israel. From the enemies. Can't you feel it? Can't you see it now? It should be obvious to you what our enemies are trying to do to us and who are our enemies. See, there's a pattern that this system, this world system has set up for us to follow the pattern, even in systematic theology, to always keep us blind and to be, keep us in obedience and to keep us uh, believing how the world is and religion and, and the Roman Catholicism and how it is and Christianity and this is the way we do it and this is the way it's always been and you go to seminary and you go to Bible college and it's taught like this for... Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and it's passed down and this is who Jesus is and this is how Jesus look. No, it's not. The Lord is pulling the cover now. He say, he, he, take the scales off your eyes if you want to be awakened in this truth. Hallelujah. You know, time to be lost in sin and doing things in the world. Christ despised the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh now. See that's that glory. He was, see he was crowned with glory and honor. For doing what he did. And laying his life down for us. Hallelujah. Now we get to the scripture where it says. For consider him that endured. Such contradiction of sinners. Against himself. Lest you be weary and faint in your minds. You have not resisted unto blood. Striving against sin. So Christ is saying. You know Paul is putting it in here. The author of Hebrews. I believe is Paul. If, you know, who they try to say the uh, author of Hebrews is unknown. But I believe it's Paul. I don't know. However. He said you have not yet resisted unto blood. Striving against sin. I mean, you ain't done nothing. You think you fighting sin. You think you, you know, you made it through. You, you done conquer some things. You fighting against. No, the Bible, the, the scripture is saying no. When you really strive and fight against sin, it's going to be unto blood. Till you die. Christ died striving against sin. He made sure that sin, like Paul said, don't, didn't reign in his mortal body. Get rid of all the lustful thoughts, the lustful ideas, the lustful temptation. Deny it. Turn it down. Man, you got you to gotta be serious about this truth and this walk of holiness. 
That's how you strive against sin unto blood. You're willing to die to make sure that you're not going to be in no sin. That's what the apostles did. They'd rather die than to break the commandments or not keep the Shabbat. They'd rather die than to compromise their faith. When that time come for a lot of saints and martyrs or whatever, uh, not whatever, but a lot of martyrs in the faith, when that time come and when it came for our ancestors, they had to look death right in the eye. But what you going to do? Who you love? Who do you really love? Are you willing to die for the truth? Are we willing to die for the truth? A lot of people are not willing to die for the truth. I mean, a lot of people just feel like this is a game. Like, they just here. But see, let's look at a scripture here in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 9. Because I shared something earlier that said, um, you know, those who love the truth in the last days will be the most hated. And I, I'm experiencing that because uh, you, people don't want to live right. They want to have their own thoughts. They don't want to see there's only one truth in the scriptures. One truth in the scriptures. It's not all of these different ideas and ideologies and philosophies and, you know, all of what therapists and all these people say. No, the Lord just said, you know, no. Not in a multitude of counseling in Israel is safety. Where you get your counseling from? But those that love truth in the last days will be hated. Now, according to Ezekiel chapter 3, the Lord makes us strong against those that hate us for the truth. He says here, as an adamant harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Now, people don't like you because your head is forehead and they can't get away with what they want to get away with with you. Or you're just going to be hated by naysayers and those that feel like you're self-righteous, you're, you're, you're over-righteous or, you know. He said, fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks. Because people going to roll their eyes, cut their eyes at you. He said, though they be a rebellious house, don't fear them. I made your forehead like flint, hard as a brick. A brick wall, stone. Stand just like you are. Because if you compromise and you don't be like the Most High tell you to be in righteousness and in holiness, which is set apart, you're going to compromise your faith. You're going to compromise your walk. You're going to compromise your conversation. You're going to compromise your communication. You're going to compromise the company who you hang with, who you're with. You're going to compromise those, those things. And bad company corrupt good manners. So you go, you're going to compromise it because your head is not, you know, you're, you're letting up. You're not allowing the Lord to make your, 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 your forehead harder than flint. He said, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thy ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity. Talk about Israel, our people, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. He said, tell them whether they want to hear or whether they don't want to hear. Because people don't like truth. People want you to be like them. They want you to experience sin, make excuses for sin, stay indulgent in sin, feel like you don't have to keep the commandments. They don't, they don't want to keep the laws, say that's done away with. Have excuses. But the Lord said, you know, whether they were here or whether they will forbear, go tell them what I said. Keep teaching. They're going to say you can't teach because you're a female, you're a woman, you can't teach. They're going to say all kinds of things. They're going to, they're going to call you names. They, they're going to say that you're in a cult. They're going, to, they're going to say all kinds of things. Look what happened to the uh, patriarchs, the, the prophets of old. Look what happened to our ancestors. 
that the Most High gave Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Malachi, all of the prophets in the scripture, even more, they were persecuted. And then they, the Bible said a lot of them was uh, sawn asunder. Sawed asunder. They were, they were persecuted. They were killed for their faith. Jeremiah put in prison. Told Israel, obey the Lord. You're going to captivity. Go head on in Babylon and um, build houses. Settle down with your families. They was like, what? What? Go into captivity? They couldn't believe that the Lord was sending them into captivity because of their sins. But then when the destruction came for in Jerusalem, they, you know, they saw that was a bad, devastating thing that happened in Jerusalem. Jerusalem became a desolate place. People were eating their loved ones. It just was desolate. But those that obeyed, Jeremiah said, the Lord going to bless you. He going to bless you now. He going to send you into captivity with your enemies. You're going into captivity. It ain't going to change. You're going into captivity for 70 years. You're going into captivity, Israel. Then when it came another 400 years for us to go again, then, you know, here we, you know, coming out of it now. But then Israel even went into captivity with the Assyrians and different other nations. So they wanted to, like, kill Jeremiah. He even had to say, Lord, are we just homeborn slaves because you keep putting us through captivity? But he did what the Lord told him to do to tell Israel. Warning them of not sinning, warning them of not doing certain things that's going to compromise their salvation and bring a curse upon them and shut them down. You see? So he said, thus saith the Lord, whether they hear or whether they forbear. Then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing saying, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Because the Lord, when he speaks, everyone has to listen. His presence. His presence is always with us. That's what he, his presence is always with us. His presence is how we know he's speaking to us. You see? But this, we are in a race. We have to run this race with patience. Run. Then the scripture say the race is not given. Let's get the, to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but him that endures to the end. Why is the scripture saying the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skills, but time and chance happen, happeneth to, to it all, to them all. That's why I was saying earlier, whatever the Lord has promised you in these last days, whatever the Lord is, is, has, has ordained for your life, he's going to do it. He's going to make a way. He's going to bless you. The Lord want us to make sure that our eyes are fixed and gaze upon him. Let's look at that scripture. Let's look at that one as well, because this is giving us the understanding. Because, look, you're going to be persecuted in this world. People don't know the Lord. They, they're going to persecute you. They don't know nothing about the Lord. They don't know anything about the Lord. So, of course, they're going to do you wrong. Yeah, they're going to do you wrong. They're going to uh, ridicule you and persecute you. Now, let's look in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. It said, let thine eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. That's verse 26. You see that? This is what the Lord is telling us to do. That's why uh, when you get to the Proverbs 5 and 1, my son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thy ear, bow thine ear to my understanding. 
that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. You see that? And it goes on in verse three, of course, to tell you why he's talking to the men in our nation not to be deceived by evil Eve. Anyone that's not living right or don't love the Lord and his commandment, a woman is an evil Eve. Now we want to. Let's look at verse 25 again. Proverbs 4 and 25. Let thine eyes look right on. And let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Why is the Most High saying this? Because you look in verse 24, he said, Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Because we, we got to ponder our, our path. We have to ponder our paths. Let's go a little further back. Let's go to Proverbs chapter four. We're still in there. And we're going to go to verse 19. Since we was talking about darkness and light earlier. So we're going to go to verse 19. Uh, a little further back. Just give me a second here. Let's go to verse 18. Proverbs chapter four, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light. That shineth more and more unto the perfect. Your heart is beautifully right. You love the Lord and your heart is beautifully right. Let's read it again. Proverbs 4.18. But the path of the just is as a shining light. Why did he say but it uh, used the conjunction but? Well, we got to go back to verse um, to get a full understanding. We're talking about, he's talking about the wicked. Talking about the wicked for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. That's why the conjunction is there. But verse 18 now. The path of the just is as the shining light. They're not like the wicked. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. You can't dim the light of the just. You can't dim the light of the righteous. The path of the just is as a shining light. You can't put that light out. Light. There's no darkness in light. Darkness can pierce light. No, Salakia. Light can pierce darkness. Light can pierce darkness. Light can pierce darkness. But darkness can pierce light. Because there's no darkness in light. Light is light. Light is light. You're fully awake. Your eyes are fully open. You're surrounded by light. Light. Shining light. That shines more and more until the perfect day. When you, when you have light and you walk in light, you're walking in perfection. You're walking in perfection because you know now. See, the law is light. The commandments are light. That's why he said, let that word be a light unto my, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Showing you the way. The righteous way. The holy way. The good way. The light. He's the light. Christ is the light of the world. He said we are the light of the world that sit upon a hill that cannot be hid. We're the light. We got to walk in the light. Run this race. Run this race. In the light. They don't do races at night. And if they do, technology got it. They got all of these massive light. You can't run in the dark to win a prize. You got to run in the light. You got to walk in the light. Let's go to verse 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. The wicked are not going to see the good path in, to walk in the light because they way is darkness don't walk in the dark the Lord don't want us walking in the dark you got to be somewhere where there's light because if you walk in the, the dark there's 
thieves and robbers and murderers and all kind of evil out there when you walk in the dark. They, they out there waiting for a victim. See, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he made a vow. Because, you know, he's, he, his imps and the demons that work for him is full of darkness. That's what people think evil about you. That's why when you're on a job or wherever you at, your occupation or your business, or you out doing things in the public and people don't have this truth, you can't expect for them to treat you the right way. Because they don't have any light in them. They can act like they have light, but they don't have the light of these commandments and these word, this word. Especially if it's not written for them. And they not want to cleave the right way to love Israel and bless Israel. So they're in darkness. They wicked. They think wicked. They know they wicked. They want to be wicked. So you don't have to convince them. You release them to the most high. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. They stumble in the dark. The wicked stumble in the dark. You don't walk in, go anywhere in the dark. You don't have no light. No, you can't even see where you're going. So you don't have this word. You walking in darkness. You don't have the word. You can't even hear what the Most High is telling you. Because you're walking in darkness. You're in your own ways walking in darkness. That's why a lot of our nation, things are happening to them because they're walking in darkness. That's why we have to put this word out there to help someone realize I'm going the wrong way. I need to go back and walk in the, the light. I need to walk in the light. Walk in the light and run this race with patience. Verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Verse 21. Proverbs 4, 21. Again. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. His words are, are his commandments. His laws and statute. The most high is serious. There's a law of reciprocity in the air and the spirit. You read what you sow, you're going to get it. You can't keep going around offending and doing anything you want in this world. As a child of the most high. Verse 22 for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. The word of the Lord is life unto those that find his laws and health to all flesh. You either keep it and want it and you got it and you're going to live by it or you don't. Because the Lord is the only one that's going to make it happen for you. In here and in this life and eternity. The life next to come. Verse 23 says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issue of life. I said it earlier. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it flow. Well, Salakia, so like it's not the word flow, but that's uh, in the Amplified. But we in King James Version. Let's read it again. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Keep thine heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Like everything can affect your heart in life. Make you or break you. Situations can make you or break you. People can make you or break you. Situations. Where you doing? What you doing? Where you going? How are you thinking? The issues of life. What are you into? What's your circumstance? How is that going to affect your heart? You got to be strong in the Lord in your heart. He said, guard your heart. Don't let it get you to your heart. You already know the Lord told you these things was going to happen to you. You already know what the Lord said, how the world is and how people are. You already know the Lord said it wasn't a friend. It wasn't an enemy, David said. That did him wrong, but one that he took sweet counsel from and went to the house of the Lord, ate bread from and stabbed him in his back. You already know that. You already know your closest kin, your family, your children, your mother, father have the potential and the propensity to hurt you and devastate you. You already know this. And betray you. 
So why would you let it get to your heart? You give up the spirit, the ghost, and go back in the world. Stop reading your Bible. You already, the Bible already told us this. To guard your heart. You have to understand these things. Forgive and keep it moving. If he do a separation, let it separate and keep it moving. That's how you run with patience. That's how you walk in the light. That's how you shower your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're going to still walk in peace with all men. You're not going to let nothing hold you back. Your own nation doing things to you. You're not going to let that hold you back. Keep praying for them. Don't wish nothing bad on them. Cursing your own nation. He said in verse 24 again, put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Stop cursing people and saying bad things about people. This is what he's saying. You know, speaking of things that we ought not to be having conversations about. Lewd things. We're about to wrap it up. Got 10 more minutes here. Lewd situation. Lewd things. Unrighteous things. Gossiping. Slander. Putting a bad report on people. Thinking you're doing the right thing because you're slandering them. And you're saying things about them. Out of your own belly, the Lord didn't even tell you to say that. You're cursing yourself. You're cursing yourself because you could be talking about the Lord's anointing. He said, touch not my anointing, nor do my prophet no harm. You could be doing that. Verse 25 again, key point. Let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Like block it all out. Block it all out. They have those blockers on the side, on the right and the side of some glasses. You don't see nothing but straight ahead. Somebody say in my per peripheral vision on the side, I don't need that. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. That's the spirit of the Lord. He got us. He give us discernment to know what's around us, who's around us, what they're doing, what they're saying, at what time. Whatever he want to reveal, that's what he revealed. The Bible says he don't have us ignorant concerning Satan devices. So your enemies think they're getting ahead of you and doing stuff to you. The Most High just dropping it in your spirit, revealing it to you so he can tell you what to do, how to maneuver around and what to say, what to do. Go here, go there. Be quiet. I need you to do this, not say nothing. The Lord. It's all the Lord. It's all the Lord. People, the Bible say, you know, this the wicked try to bring their wicked devices to pass. What they trying to do to you. What they're saying to you. How they trying to trip you up. You just watching it all because the Most High already been warn you and show you who your enemies are in the spirit. He, that's why he told us to walk circumspectly. And be wise among those that are without the truth. The Bible say even the, the scripture says that he binds the hands of the wicked so that they can't perform the enterprise because he knows that the evil nations around us and people got it in for us. If they can trip you up, they'll try to trip you up. But see, that's why he said, you know, we don't supposed to have our heart in this goods of the world. He's going to make a way. He's going to make sure what's ours is ours and it's going to be it's going to remain like that. One more scripture and we closing out. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. And let's go to verse 31. Very key scripture here. Very familiar passage of scripture. It says here, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Let's stop right there. Let's go back. We got we to slow it down. It's a conjunction here. Let's go back to verse 30 because that was a conjunction. Right? Because we got to see why is there a con conjunct conjunction in these scriptures. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. And let's look at verse 29. It says, he giveth power to the faint. P 
people that feel like giving up. Because you can feel like that sometimes, right? In this world. So many things coming at you. You know, you can you know, feel like that every now and then. Not often. If you're in this truth, it's going to roll up off of you. But he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Yes, he does. Why? Because his eyes are looking. His eyes are looking. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases, increases strength. Right? Now, verse 30 said, Even the youths shall fall and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Even the youths shall fall, shall faint, rather, Salakia. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. It's telling us something here. But, here's the conjunction. But, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. There's a pacing going on here. Because the Lord's going to mount you up with wings. If you wait on the Lord, He's going to renew your strength. You don't have nothing to worry about. You're running this race with patience, and you're walking in the light. So He's going to renew your strength. Because you're waiting on him. He's going to mount you up with wings as an eagle against all of the problematics in life. Then he said, you're going to, you shall run and not be weary. Now you're going to have the strength to run this race with patience. And you're not going to be weary. And you're going to walk when it's time and not faint. You're going to walk in the light and you're going to be able to walk and not faint. You see that? Because the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. He's with us like a mighty warrior. And we just thank him today for his word. The Shabbat means so much. You know, we want to buckle down and Really obey the Lord and keep the commandments and, you know, honor the high holy feast days and honor him on the Shabbat and give ourselves unto him. The scripture says from doing your own pleasure, then he will bless us. And we, we, we know that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. We know that the blessing of the Lord keeps us healed and know that the blessing of the Lord keep us whole. His blessings give us wisdom. His blessings just are upon Israel to save us from our enemies. This is the truth of the Lord. And he has given us, the scripture says, all that we need that pertaineth to life and godliness. So we don't have to go look at elsewhere for our deliverance. We don't have to go look elsewhere for salvation. For salvation is Israel, of Israel. Salvation is for Israel and it's of Israel. It's not for any other nation. Whatever the Lord does and have mercy on other people that's trying to be a part of this great salvation that we have. That the angels even desire to look into. They have to come this way. They have to be a part of this. This way. The righteous way. The holy way. But. The Lord is talking to Israel in these scriptures to let us know how we're going to get through and get past our enemies that are here in this land. We have enemies all around. Everywhere you go. Now the Lord is revealing more and more how much we really hate it. You have to stick with your nation. The Lord is the Lord is revealing to us more and more just how much our, 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 our enemies really hate us. So you can't be fooled and trapped by your enemies. Because the Lord already given us the scriptures to let us know how they feel about us. And it's getting worse. And they think they have a plan to cut us off. 
annihilators with atrocities. We, we see this happening on the news. We see it. So the Lord is telling us to keep the word coming and keep the spirit going and witness and be effective and come out of sin. And you're not going to be effective if you're in sin. You can forget it. You can't do nothing for the most high. Sit down. The only way you're going to be effective if you're not in sin. Because you're perverting the gospel. And you're making, you're bringing the most high name to an open shame. For nations to feel that we can't live our truths. We can't live the commandments. Oh, they know, a lot of people know we Israel. They knew back in the day. They knew. That's why when your house shot was on the scene, you know, trying to, he wasn't trying. He was witnessing and ministering and showing compassion and love to the, the, the publicans, the sinners. And then they saw him and say, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees, the judgmental ones say, look, how do your master is eating with sinners? Because people know that there is a difference. There's a difference, but they were wrong about Christ because he had that kind of power. He can go eat and sit with them and, 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 and minister to them because he came not to heal those that are already sick. That was so like those that are already healed. He said those that are healed don't need a physician. He came to heal those that are sick. So you got to get well so you can become fishers of men for Christ. And that's what we do. And we just praise him for giving us his word and allowing us to break the bread of life today. May the most high bless you, keep you, lift up his, lift up his countenance upon you, give you great grace and mercy and peace, all your steps, and let his light of countenance shine upon you. Until next time, Israel. Shalom.